I'm making this video for people who have attended my session so that they have something to refer back to. But if you haven't attended one of my sessions, please just follow along. It's quite simple. And today we're going to be looking at the three types of grids that are now available for free to teachers on Flipgrid. So I'm going to go in as an educator. And when it does, it's going to um, probably recognize me because I was just on Flipgrid, so it knows who I am. And we're going to talk about making a grid. And you can find your grids here under My Grids, but I'm going to go to Add a New Grid. And we're going to talk about the three different ways you can add a grid. So if I use the drop-down menu, you can see there's my classroom or school, student ID list, or PLCs, and public grids. We're going to talk about My Classroom School first because this is a way for you to have kids who have an email address that's associated with Google or Microsoft to automatically get into the grid. And so you just set it up using that domain and then any kid with that domain in their email will be able to get on. So let me show you what that looks like. If I um, come here, I'm going to call the grid name example just because uh, I want to remember to delete it later. But I can also give under here, I can create a Flipgrid code. I can give this to kids, but as a teacher, I kids can never get these numbers right. So I like to customize it. I'm going to call this Holly example. And it's available, so I'm just going to tell them your Flipgrid code is Holly example. Down here, I can pick a picture that's going to show when they come to the grid. And there's ones for nature, people, textures, whatever. Or you can bring in a picture by bringing in your own, but it will have to be a certain size and it will walk you through that. But I'm just going to pick this nature scene and I'm going to go to next. Now here is where it's asking about your school domain. So I'm going to put in mine, which is Oak Hill, CA. Dot org. And there I'm going to be able to say or I'm telling Flipgrid that any kid who has this email address ending can use this grid. So I'm going to launch the grid and it's ready. You can see the picture I chose and I'm all set and I can start. But I'm going to go back right now and talk about the other things that I can do. So if I go to new grid again, our second option is student ID. What this is for is this is for when I have a kid who um, doesn't have an email address or is maybe in kindergarten and we haven't given them a Google account yet. Um, uh, I recommend giving them a Google account, maybe not an email, but an account. But if they don't have one, then I can come, I can make another example grid. I can call this Holly example one because Holly example is already taken. For a little kid, I probably wouldn't have one that long, but I'll grab a picture again and I go to next. Now here is where I say who's going to be able and allowed to come into my grid. So I'm going to have my student Ben. And Ben is going to have a student ID. It could be 01, it could be cat, it could be whatever is easy. So I'm going to call him 01 and I add him. So he's going to come into Holly example 1 and it's going to ask for his student ID, which is 01. Uh, that's an easy way to get kids in that's safe. So I'm going to go to next. And I am going to launch my grid. Same thing, I have a grid here. We're going to look at the third option. Now the third option allows you to do something where people don't have to have a student ID or a Google or Microsoft account. And, um, and you might want to, maybe you're doing a training or you want parents to come into a grid. And so I'm going to make the grid again. I'm going to call it example. It's going to have example, Holly example. This time it'll be two because I've used just one. And so there we go, it's available. I'm going to pick a picture. But now when I make this, it's going to um, it's going to require, I'll give people the code, which would be Holly example 2, and it will just require them to give me some information via an email address so that I can uh, know who they are and it can be a little more official. So I launch my grid and I'm ready to go. So now that we have made one of those three grids, and it will just depend on the situation at your school, what you're going to use, I'm all set. So let's look at what happens. By default, Flipgrid puts this with every single uh, grid that they make, a let's connect. And that let's connect might not be how you want to start. So we're going to go in and learn how to change this. So if I come over here to the edit button or actions, um, I could choose either one. The actions has a drop down menu with several things you can do, including delete the grid, which I will do later. But I'm going to edit this grid. And when I edit it, I can change what it says. So it, right now it said let's connect. I don't want that because school's starting in a couple days and I want kids to introduce themselves. 
Um, so I'm going to put introduce yourself. I can leave a topic tip like this is a this is for um, us to get to know each other or some tip that's going to have to be up to you. And that's pretty cool. That's new and it just came out in August. I can choose between 15 seconds and 5 minutes. I like 30 seconds because I really want an elevator pitch of who you are. I don't want to spend 5 minutes listening to everything in this particular instance. And then uh, Flipgrid has defaulted um, an example there for you. So I'm going to change it. Welcome back to school. Okay. And, and I'm going to put, please tell us three things about yourself you are most proud of. Maybe they're singer, maybe um, something like that. So I, I, I changed that. I can come back down here now by default, and this is new. Um, Flipgrid puts the topic privacy at video moderation. I'm not a huge fan of that. I want the videos to go up. I don't want to watch them first. I don't want to have to approve it. So I'm going to turn this off. And I and the only time I'll use it is when I don't want kids to see each other's videos, which is very rare in my particular case. So I'm going to turn that off. I can have the status active. I could make it come up on August 15th when school starts. There's many things I can do in this topic set status, but later on I might want to make it inactive so it's not there and confusing kids when they go to this grid. Um, now the resource, they automatically put this uh, Snoopy one. I don't like that one, so I'm going to delete this, and when I do, it asks, are you sure, and I say yes, and then all of these other examples come up. I could record a video to my kids saying, hey, and giving an example. I could upload a video of something. I could add a, vid a Vimeo or a YouTube. I can upload an image of, like, welcome back or something like that. I like to add jiffies, and uh, I'm going to do this think one. And so I like to, it's just like my go-to is this think. I don't use it all the time because that would get boring for kids. But now I've used, okay, so next um, I can turn off the things that go with the video like stickers and drawings, but I like to have that on. I can um, make the uh, attachment that I could do up here, which is um, could be a rubric or, or directions for this particular assignment. And it could be a Google Doc and I can attach that so kids can look over it before they answer. Maybe they have a reading assignment that they respond to and I put it in that attachment. Many things can happen there. It's just the world is your oyster. So when I'm done looking at all of these, I go to the bottom right hand corner where it says update topic. You're going to see now that this topic has been updated to introduce yourself rather than let's connect and every time you do that you're gonna to have to change the let's connect unless you want to start there and you may want to it's a fine way to start so there are my topic details now I'm gonna go into it as a student so this says view as a student I'm gonna go into this topic inside of a grid which says introduce yourself and I'm gonna hit this green add button. Now if you haven't stopped the moderation it'll say moderated right here at the bottom and so it'll be a re reminder to everyone that these videos are going to be moderated before they go up. So I'm going to use the plus button. I'm having to log in with Google because I, I am not using my um, school account right now and in my private account and I am now, oops, not a good one never is but I'm gonna record and I want to talk about some of these recording options so we're gonna stop here and we're gonna come back and we're going to talk about the recording options in another video because they're so distinctly different now so this is how we start a grid it's how we change the topic and I'm gonna go back to using the three dots which is called more options I'm gonna go back to my educator dashboard and I'm gonna look and here's my examples the three I did and um, just so you know I don't want to keep these but how you would and how I'm going to right now delete it is I just hit the arrow down and I delete the grid and that's as simple as that. So I'm going to do it for this one as well, just so you can see it again. And I want to talk about really quickly some of these other things on here. I can edit, which you saw me do, but that would be the grid. We were editing the topic. And remember, a grid is the overarching theme, and the topics are the topics within that grid. So your, your grid might be the outsiders, and the topic might be chapter one, chapter two. 
Um, I can view the topics, which I only have one for that particular grid. I can add a co-pilot, which is a teacher that I might be working with or somebody outside in the community that I want to work with on this particular um, a grid. I can duplicate the grid because I want to make one for period two. I can get grid notifications that say, hey, kids just responded to your grid. That's totally up to you. I'm not into it. And I can have integrations. And integrations mean that, um, that you do something with the Microsoft Teams. I'm not a Microsoft user, so I can't show you that. But if I go back um, to my grid, those are the things that I could do to change it. So that is setting up a grid and a topic and what that looks like. So there are three ways to do a grid and topics go inside of that grid that you've chosen.